Robert, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ebro. Thank you, Ebro. Thank you very much. Uh, a warm welcome to you to our evening panel. We usually uh, organize this panel in that way that it's more informal, that we be more in a dialogue, that it's more like a conversation on the floor. Because everybody of you heard a lot of talks today, and probably you are a little bit tired, and we have now the um, necessity also to be a little bit more entertaining, because it's late in the day. Our issue is still the question social cohesion. What future do we seek? That means, probably, uh, how can we, by means of improving social cohesion, uh, better our societies, our na nations, our neighborhoods, and our uh, cities? The question is also, what's, what's, what kind of thing it is, social cohesion? <laughs> uh, it's uh, a kind of technical term. Obviously, it has anything, something to do with chances, with education, with uh, opportunities of, op uh, of education, but also with other kinds of opportunities, with uh, the quarters we are living in. So it has obviously something to do with uh, housing. It has also obviously something to do with uh, uh, with healthcare. We can also ask the question do we need social cohesion in a diverse society or in, or in diverse societies where we are used to living together with people we don't really live together with? We live a life and they live their lives, and that's in a way that there is no social cohesion in that way is also sometimes. Uh, uh, significant for cities, for the city life. So maybe uh, we don't need too much social cohesion. Also this question we should address here. And we should also address questions of history, of uh, political fights, and also of, pe uh, of, uh, of questions of how uh, we do improve social cohesion at the ground. Um, I have four wonderful speakers or panelists here today. The first one is Gilda Jone. She's coming from Linz, I assume. Um, Gilda Jone uh, is coming from Linz. She's working there at, with a kind of NGO or uh, initiative of, uh, of, of uh, doing Gemeinwesenarbeit community organizing, uh, which is called Nachbarinnen especially working with uh, people who have a mig uh, migration background, uh, bringing them, them into society, helping them to come into society. She will, she will um, tell us uh, about in some seconds. My second guest is Georgi Dragulov. Um, he is from Bulgarian origins and living now in Bremen, I assume. Um, he's uh, a scholar at the Jacobs University in Bremen, and he's uh, um, a specialist on the question of social cohesion. Um, he edited a lot of books. One is, for example, Social Cohesion in the Western World. He also ed had some, wrote some essays or uh, scientific pieces about social cohesion in Asia, so he can uh, uh, tell us about how we measure social uh, cohesion, how we compare it, and so on. Gianluca Solera, he's right on my side, um, is coming from Italy. Uh, he, is, uh, uh, he, he, he worked in the city of, the city of Mantua. Ma Mantua. He uh, uh, was also one of the co-founders of the Green Platform there. So he's a kind of scholar, but also a writer and a political activist. Uh, in a way, being uh, especially uh, with a lot of experience in the Mediterranean uh, 
in the Mediterranean, but also in, in, in Arabic countries, but especially also in Spain, in Italy, and uh, in, uh, in Greece, societies which are in a way different than others, but not too different than others. And uh, my fourth guest, uh, Philippe Thea, uh, a good friend. <laughs> uh, Philippe uh, Thea is uh, living in Vienna. Uh, he is professor für Geschichte Osteuropas, also uh, professor for the history of Eastern Europe at the University of Vienna. Uh, he is also a well-known uh, book out author, uh, for example, f about his book about the new order at the old continent. I, obviously, in English there's another title, but I <laughs> translated now the German title to English. Uh, he got the, the award of the Leipzig Buchmesse, uh, and his last book, um, is about migration and refuge, uh, and refugees especially, uh, called the Außenseiter. The Outsiders, uh, which has already in the title, people who are not part in the framework of social cohesion, because they are outsiders of that framework, and how they can become insiders, uh, this is the issue uh, of this book. So, all of you are welcome here on the floor, Great to have you here, um, and welcome to Vienna, to, to that of you who are not from Vienna. Gilda Jone, uh, uh, what is your uh, perspective to the question of social cohesion? Is this an issue for you in your work, or is it empowerment of, for people who, are, who, who need it? because they come from other countries, they are underprivileged, uh, they, uh, they need the help to be part of a society. Um. Ich würde das gar nicht so trennen. Also well, I would not really split it like that, including the question of social cohesion, because for me what is also important is what is this really? So I then tried to find out what it means, and when I hear catchwords like uh, solidarity, being there for one another, supporting each other, I would not really split it into migrants and the uh, bio uh, authentic population. So this is rather about uh, working together, cooperating, saying that what is really the objective of our project, our neighboring neighbor project is not about them or us, it is rather building bridges between two worlds, and that for me is also part of this coexistence. It's always building bridges when we talk about social cohesion. So actually everyone on the panel speaks German, so I can speak German as well, or at least understand German. So this for me is a question anyway. So on the one hand, we're doing something for fringe groups, which are called fringe groups for some reason, which, on, which then in turn makes those groups who do not define themselves as a fringe group feel that they're not involved, that it's not their issue. So is that the objective? Is the objective really community work? so that everyone will get together? Yes, really. But I think that this is not necessarily so, not by saying you must, you must, you must, but it's something that is or should come from the inside. But in order for it to uh, be created from the inside, we need the framework conditions so that it can grow. And that really is then creating the framework conditions so that it uh, provides this intrinsic motivation because when you talk about fringe groups, it is always the stigmatization. So maybe the overage just are a fringe group as well. The question always is whom shall we include and where shall we include them to? So I believe it is very important that we have this work in order to then promote this cohesion, but not at any price. 
Sir, including that you were, should this be something that should happen throughout the term, or is it just in one specific quarter? So, we will need to look for a specific quarter where we can do the chalk. Does it take the micro level or will it also apply to the macro level? So, according to me, it works on the micro level because for me, this is docking onto the one person that would be the neighbor, the person next to you. So, I cannot really imagine that on a very high level. What, after all, is it? Of course, so again, we can differentiate, but for me, for my job, this really is something that happens on the micro level in a city quarter, for instance, where we also do that. Georgi Dragulov. After this first round, I invite you all uh, to ignore me and to discuss uh, between uh, everybody. Um, uh, we heard already this kind of Gemeinwesen Arbeit, community organizing. The concept from, from the beginning of the concept of community organizing it comes from the United States also, uh, and it's similar to that what happened in Europe, uh, for example, 100 years ago with political parties of the left who tried to bring together people in their, in, in, in their quarters to empowerment there, uh, give them a voice. Um, uh, it's it's not a concept of social te techno technocracy. It's a concept, in a way, of a political activism from below. Uh, uh, from, 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 from below. Uh, and we heard at the lecture before, at the panels before, um, one of the speakers said uh, there are a two concepts, social cohesion of cities, but which means everybody should, it's a normative concept, everybody should be friendly to everybody else and the poor should accept the uh, power of the powerful and the powerful and the rich should share with the poor. Uh, and then he said the other concept is social cohesion in cities and this kind of social cohesion is a, 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 a kind of result of resistance. You as an uh, activist writer, uh, who has a knowledge also with the political protests and fights in the Mediterranean in the last uh, uh, 10, 20 years, uh, and also with the political developments, for example, in Spain, in Greece. Uh, uh, would you share that concept? Would you, would you, how would you, uh, you define what is the source of social cohesion? Um, thank you, Robert. Um, well, thank you for inviting me to this uh, panel. Um, well, when I think to the concept of uh, cohesion, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is that, uh, first of all, it's, it's a technical, uh, uh, let's say, a condition. In order to reach cohesion, you need to have access uh, to fundamental services, and, and uh, you need to be able to exercise your own rights, whether they are social, economic, uh, cultural, or political, or environmental rights. But then it's not enough, uh, and, and maybe it's not uh, the all of that. Uh, when I think to cohesion, there are three things, three ideas which come to my mind, and that I have been appreciating uh, crossing many countries and many social movements in the Mediterranean. The first one is sociality, mm -hmm. a space where people can enjoy staying together, and, there, and therefore, the public space is a space of uh, empathy and also a space of exchange and dialogue, which has a political significance as well. But first of all, it's a space of empathy. Uh, the second one is uh, gratuity. The fact that you do it, uh, not necessarily in order to give a, a monetary value to that. And, and think to the concept of hospitality. You know, hospitality is something absolutely important in the Mediterranean. There is a, a viafa, the Arab saying, which is hospitality and welcoming at the same time. And it's still uh, rooted in our, uh, uh, in our cultures. Uh, and the third one is diversity. Mm -hmm. I mean, diversity is uh, the richness of this region, of uh, Europe and, and the Mediterranean. So in order to reach cohesion, you, have, uh, you, need, you need that. But in order to, to, to have that, you have to be active, you have to explore it. 
and the, in, in, in an area where uh, we, have, we are faced with many challenges, I think that cities are one of those, maybe mm, the most important places where you can practice that. Mm -hmm. Uh, think to the tradition, I mean, the Mediterranean space is a space of cities. Mm -hmm. The space where the civilization, the urban civilizations were born in the east and in the west. And you know, in, in, in city you, you had a mixture of, uh, of uh, social layers, and you had a mixture of functions, and you had a mixture of uh, uh, spaces uh, in, in the same reachable uh, uh, distance somehow. And that was uh, the richness of the space of this idea of the city. So you have cities, and therefore it's, uh, for me, very important that you practice uh, this idea of cohesion in cities. And another place where you can see this is still is the islands. Mm -hmm. Because islands, somehow, you are forced by nature, by the isolation, to practice that in order to find uh, 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 surviving strategies that uh, build the necessary condition for coexistence, for mutual support and solidarity within the local community. And, uh, uh, and this is what uh, I think we have, uh, we have to go through. Uh, for me, uh, I have heard many things uh, today, uh, and there is something which, uh, uh, for me, crosses the old debates, uh, which is we have to stop thinking about borders. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are two major challenges, in my view, in the contemporary times which we can only face by stopping thinking about borders. The first one is climate, mm -hmm. the climate change, and the second one is the uh, uh, growing uh, uh, process of migration, of uh, uh, mobility of people, which is part of the history of this region, but with the current uh, continuous and uh, uh, overlapping crises, which are political, environmental, social, and so on, it is somehow uh, uh, spinning up in terms of, uh, 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 of velocity somehow. And uh, if we stop thinking in terms of borders, we can experiment new solutions. And cities have a major role in that, because in cities you can experiment solutions not on the, not on the basis of your origins, not on the basis of your uh, ethnical identity or religion, not on the basis of your citizenship status, but on the basis of the residence, on the basis that you all live in the same place, you share the same context with its physical constraints, its resources, its potentials, its limits, and therefore you have to find a solutions together. Otherwise, you will keep living in a, con in a context of conflict. And therefore, cities have a major political role, in my view, to teach us communities, citizens, policymakers, that the next uh, frontier of uh, policy action is to go beyond borders. And cities are the experimental places, in my view, where this can be done. And therefore, I welcome any kind of attempt of bringing cities together from both shores of the Mediterranean, from the Eastern Europe and Western Europe, from all the places where there is a physical or symbolic borders dividing them in order to create the conditions for a different future. Uh, one, one second question to that. Um, because you are a scholar, especially on Mediterranean, for example, in Spain, we have now in the last years uh, the experience that there are a lot of new political forces, which are forces in, in cities, uh, that start playing a leading role in the, po in the polit uh, politics of, of their country, for example, in Barcelona, in Madrid, but somewhere else, uh, new political forces that are not, identi uh, not, uh, they are not in the, an identity with the leading, let's say, left parties on national scales. They are left parties, but some new and special left, but not only parties, uh, com new communities, we can call them, um, uh, working on their municipal yeah. uh, uh, space. Is this a kind of future? Is this, uh, how, a, how would you define this? It's absolutely it's a kind of new season of municipalism, mm -hmm. I would say. And by the way, let me mention an initiative I'm somehow following with attention mm -hmm. throughout this network of European activists called European Alternatives. This is called Solidarity Cities, mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm they and we, I'm also yeah. working with them, we are trying to connect uh, cities which are experiencing, experimenting on the ground, solidarity, solidarity cities is a 
again, another network, but it's more is a space of exchange and a mutual support where you have, we are trying, for example, to bring the Polish mayors who are facing the new uh, 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 excluding and uh, uh, oppressive policies of the central government. You have a network of uh, Spanish uh, 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 mayors, but you have Milan, you have Palermo, you have Naples. Mm -hmm. And this is a new season where uh, the idea is that uh, cities can, throughout municipalism, which is also a democratic practice, because it's not only about uh, values and policies, it's also about how you do it, mm -hmm. how you exercise it. And this is important that the community also belongs to this, this de decision-making process. So throughout that, it acquires a kind of international protagonism, which can be then exploited vis-a-vis -vis the European Union institutions mm -hmm. in terms of resources, in terms of international diplomacy, in terms of the relations with the global south. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way. But for me, this is not enough. We have to do it also with the, Medi with the Mediterranean, the enlarged Mediterranean, with North Africa, with Middle East. We have to break this idea that we can only, we can only build networks through, uh, through, uh, among Europeans. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. We have to get back to the idea that that space is the space where Eastern and Western civilization were born, where the culture of city uh, was, was uh, established. And therefore, we have really to help people to get rid of the idea that the Mediterranean is a border, mm -hmm. besides being a cemetery, is a border, is a, is a division, is, is, is the last stance before barbarians, mm -hmm. you know? We have to get rid of that, because this is very dangerous, and cities, local authorities, new democratic municipalism can help us in doing that. Yes, we should forget about borders and uh, closing the Mediterranean. Um, so maybe you should co tell this our new chancellor, but that's, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a funny thing because it's so in the political debate in Austria, this kind of, um, this kind of rhetoric. Um, uh, Georgi Dragulov, uh, now we heard a lot about what social cohesion is, can be, uh, but maybe people still not only know, uh, not really know what social cohesion is. And if you, if you don't know, now you will get the answer because uh, um, Georgi Dragulov is a, le a scientist, especially on that on that uh, issue. Uh, scientist, this, ha this means in that case also, although it's a social science, um, uh, measuring things, comparing them, comparing. Uh, nations and societies, uh, how do we measure social cohesion, or what, which issues are uh, most important, equality, income equality, uh, equality of wealth, healthcare, social housing, whatever. Or a mentality, are some nations uh, more cohesive than others by nature or something like that. Uh, so uh, how, how do you, how, what can you tell us about social cohesion from your scientific point of view? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I was a bit smiling while <laughs> Robert was enlisting his questions because typically it takes me 30 to 45 minutes to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that uh, we don't I really I won't give you them. the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it could be a whole university lecture on its own. Um, well, it is indeed a concept which originates from the social sciences, but if you notice the name, the term, has something to do with physics, cohesion. Whether the particles, let's say, of a certain object, stick together. And now, if you transfer this to a society, in very plain words, this would mean whether the, the particles of this society, basically the people, if there is something that brings them together to cooperate, to do something for the so-called common good. Mm -hmm. And um, in the first round of um, contributions from the colleagues here, we, we heard some of the um, important Synonyms of cohesion, typically this term refers to solidarity, uh, cooperation, togetherness, or other people also say, well, cohesion is basically absence of conflict. Um, and it is something indeed, 
uh, which has to do with the attitudes and behavior of people, of these particles of society, but on its own social cohesion is a, um, a characteristic of the, of the group, of the society. So we can't say that individual A is more cohesive than individual B, but we could say that one group is more cohesive than another. So we are talking about an aggregate quality. Uh, and what were your other questions? <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, yes, I remember. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to comment a bit on, um, on what Jan Lucas said, that, uh, that cities would be the, uh, yeah, the suitable experimental ground for testing solutions. This is something that I wouldn't really agree with because it excludes the rural areas. And the rural areas are also important. People live there. So I would rather speak of regions. Let's say a big city and its surrounding area as compared to another region with its structural characteristics and so on. Maybe later we will come to the point that structural characteristics indeed matter for the production of social cohesion. Uh, my, well, the research group to which I belong uh, has been researching the topic for about six years by now. Uh, we are, we've conducted our studies um, as commissioned by Bertelsmann Stiftung. Maybe uh, most of you have uh, heard this institution. Uh, and we have developed a concept First of all, to conceptualize social cohesion based on previous contributions in the social sciences. And then based on this concept, of course, we uh, found the right methodology to measure it. Mm -hmm. So for us, social cohesion is the degree of cooperation among people in society. Mm -hmm. And we could speak of three linkages. So first of all, we have the horizontal linkages in the group, that is, do people have social contacts whom they can rely on? Then do they trust others, the so-called generalized interpersonal trust? And another important aspect in our modern societies which are very diverse, this is basically the acceptance of this diversity. Diversity in terms of lifestyles, in terms of uh, various ethnic, cultural, or religious backgrounds. Then the other linkage is the vertical one between the individuals and the entity. Let's speak of countries. So whether people trust the institutions of this entity, do they feel a sense of belonging to it, and do they believe that they are treated in a just way by the institutions of this state? And then the third linkage is, we describe it as a cross-cutting one, so basically, what do people do for the community in terms of uh, helping weaker others, in, but also, very important, respecting the rules of the community, of the society? And finally, are they involved in civic life, civic participation? Uh, and then, uh, yes, we are doing empirical social science. We have measured the degree of cohesion on virtually all possible levels, starting with neighborhoods of cities, regions, and then uh, we have taken Germany as a special case, the regions of Germany, the so-called Bundesländer of Germany, these are the 16 federal states or provinces, and then we have also compared societies in the Western world and also in Asia, and we find uh, very interesting differences between these two regions. Mm -hmm. And the essence of that is that when we uh, speak about the societal level, the essence is that there are two pathways, somewhat converging, but also diverging in different ways, two pathways to produce cohesion. Mm -hmm. And this, if one goes even further, one could speak of the multipolarity in the world, which is currently emerging, so we no longer have uh, the United States as the only powerful global player, but we also have uh, Asian societies such as China, uh, whose economy is uh, heavily picking up and soon it may become the, the richest in the world. Uh, yeah. Some people 
would maybe instinctively say traditional societies uh, have more social cohesion than modern diverse societies. Is this right? Well, it depends on the concept that is used. Mm -hmm. uh, and then an example that I could give is, for example, the divide that we find between Western Europe and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, when we think about our dimension, social networks, whether people have uh, others whom they can rely on in the, in the case of need, uh, this could be defined well <laughs> in terms of the bonding social capital of Putnam that is uh, similar others, could be the, the family, the extended family, uh, but we have preferred to define it in terms of the bridging social capital of Putnam. Uh, ties to, to various others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if one takes the bonding social capital, then we would actually have the Mediterranean uh, belt of countries and probably also Central and Eastern Europe emerging as more cohesive. If we take the bridging social capital, it would be rather the Western societies that would be more cohesive. Mm -hmm. But, uh, we are not talking about closed social groups, we are talking about society as a whole. And in this case, uh, it is actually more important that one emphasizes the bridging social capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, if we go to the vertical linkage of our concept, which is a uh, sense of belonging. Here again, we find, broadly speaking, two different pathways. And one could uh, link this to uh, the idea of Emile Durkheim of the organic and mechanic solidarity, which also, yeah, it, in a way, it relates to the bridging and bonding uh, type of social, uh, of social capital. Um, we've got typically the Western uh, European countries that don't have this strongly pronounced sense of belonging mm -hmm. to the state. But all the other dimensions that I enlisted from our concept of cohesion are rather strong. And then it's totally the opposite case in countries like Bulgaria, where I originally come from, uh, Greece, I think also Cyprus, where um, people don't really trust others, acceptance of diversity is uh, either of medium quality or, or lower. Uh, there isn't much of trust in the state, uh, in, in its institutions. There isn't much of community involvement, but people are very proud. They feel very strongly attached to, to the state. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this was a long answer. The short one is it depends. Yeah. Of course, uh, there is a strong normative component in that. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you may be have realized already, and especially the, the, them of us, of you who were already at the former uh, now conferences, that this conference started with uh, the issue of uh, refugees. The ref some people uh, in the wake of the refugee crisis of 2015 thought that we have to do something about that to, uh, to, to, to address the issues, uh, to, uh, to bring our societies, uh, to, to make them uh, bring the, so, dass sie die Fähigkeiten haben, mit dieser Herausforderung umzugehen. Uh, and now that societies can uh, deal with that challenge. We don't discuss about the issue on the one hand, the, uh, the society and the, uh, the uh, thing we have to deal with, and on the other hand, the people who are coming new to our countries, uh, that we have to care about them. The question now is how can we care about everybody in, this, in, in our societies uh, to improve them as a whole? Because the problems uh, which are usually uh, seen as problems of migration, uh, that there is a us against them or something like this, that uh, this has their roots in the society as a whole and the, uh, the problems of society as a whole. And so uh, now we go a little bit back to the main issue. Um, and so I will, I'm glad that Philip there made it to us because it was not so 
uh, sure that he can make it because he came from the university with the bicycle and the bicycle was broken and he has to be a bicycle mechanic on the way so uh, you shouldn't uh, care about his black hands. Uh, he looks like a factory worker now um, but he's a university professor. Um, Philip, um, do migration, uh, mass migration, uh, uh, the necessity to integrate uh, a lot of your refugees uh, uh, undermine social cohesion because, uh, let's say, let's call it a society which was before a society of people who see them as similar is now a society of people that don't see them, uh, the other as so similar than before. Uh, some people would under, uh, uh, would subscribe to this to this uh, thesis, uh, but obviously it's not necessary that way, isn't it? Uh, ich glaube, es ist eigentlich schon. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the for the invitation first of all, and I'm I'm very sorry I had to to lecture and then there was mm -hmm. tons of exams today, so I couldn't be here mm -hmm. earlier. But anyway, uh, I sympathize with the previous views and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm just thinking, you know, what to answer first to react or first to answer to your question. Yeah. Maybe first to your question and uh, trying to, un to answer that briefly. Um, well, of course, migration always, you know, mixes up the society. So, mm -hmm. obviously, it changes the composure of the society. Now, here I would not operate with the term cohesion, but anyway, it adds something new to the society. Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, if you want, right, mass migration, be it labor migration or be it um, flight migration, of course, you know, changes, um, changes a society. Um, however, there already the problem starts, you know, why to juxtapose the society of whom? Uh, the ones already here, which is also pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. um, and also the refugees who come are, of course, very diverse. And I think that's often overlooked. And even if you talk about, let's say, our minorities in a positive way, um, then it's often overlooked how diverse they are. Mm -hmm. If I just think about, let's say, Turks in Vienna, hmm, okay, there are a lot of people of, let's say, the, uh, t Turkish origin or formerly t the Turkish citizenship, but well, some still retain their old citizenship, some don't. Some are Turks, period. Uh, I mean, Turkish Turks, but others might be Kurdish or might be actually not labor migrants, but uh, refugees, for example, from the military coup in 1918. So, you know, they would have a political background and a very different social background through that. Some might be Alevites. Um, so even if I look at that group, then there would be so many minorities in the minority that it, uh, it gets a little bit puzzling. And I think the same is true for the refugees or the society. And uh, to come back now to the original issue of this round, um, you know, why do we actually discuss cohesion? And maybe one could stay, take one step back. And as a historian, I'm of course interested, you know, when did we discuss cohesion or other related terms like integration or, you know, whatever. Um, and I think basically it is a response of... Um, that apparently there must be an impression that, you know, there has been a lot of divergence and uh, differentiation and the societies are kind of growing apart. Otherwise we wouldn't discuss the cohesion, I guess, right? Um, you know, there seems to be, modernity seems to be so dissettling and unsettling um, that we discuss about what sticks. Because apparently not enough, there's not enough sticking. Yeah? Um, so I think that's the premise, and then there's of course the question, why do we think that there is a lack of cohesion, otherwise we wouldn't discuss cohesion. I mean, most cohesion, by the way, I think is over there behind the stage. I hear, you know, I hear the rumbling of, uh, of plates, of glasses, so somebody of course is sitting at the table and, you know, having ho hopefully good talks and drinks and so there seems to be much more social cohesion over there behind us. <laughs> we try to create some social cohesion among us and hopefully with you, the audience. 
um, but without food and without drinks. And, uh, uh, you know, so our means are very limited to, to create social cohesion. There might be ours, some of you. Uh, ours, ours or uh, ours between ours us, uh, uh, the yeah. audience in here. Yeah. Um, the audience has the cohesion because it sits like in the theater and thinks it's, uh, it might be interesting to listen to us. But does this create co cohesion among this audience? I'm not even sure. Um, but okay, anyway, um, why do we actually think that there's a lack of cohesion? And I think there's just modern societies, they grow apart, and there's the eternal rule that they dif differentiate ever more. And cohesion, you know, so I'm always getting mistrustful, also if I see the term integration, which I used in my book, and that is basically what is hidden behind those concepts. Unfortunately, in recent political developments, I'm afraid that these are just trifres. And what we are talking about, even when we use the social society, is then an imagination of a cohesive society that it sticks around what? And I'm afraid that more and more we are moving back to the old concepts of national societies. And that is what makes it stick. Or maybe what we dream of sticking. So we might of you know, we might talk about social cohesion, very well meaning, but then uh, maybe the old imagination of national societies is very strong, at least it has got stronger. So that's my little uh, of my skepticism if I hear cohesion. What is it about? And I'm afraid uh, we have moved backward and, and it's much more about the nation than it used to be, let's say, five years ago or 20 years or 25 years ago. Um, now the second co uh, social that relates to it, you know, again, social, what is our imagination of the social? Now in the past uh, neoliberal age, you alluded to my book, there was of course a, a concept of compensating the lack of cohesion because of also modern capitalism and that was civil society. Okay, let's create cohesion from below by, you know, uh, civil society organizations, small scale, up to the, you know, to the scale of whole nations. And even supranational, as you said, you know, we don't need borders, which means, okay, we need cohesion beyond borders, beyond in the Mediterranean, and I sympathize with that. Um, but I wonder, you know, with all these ideas about civil societies, um, hasn't it been a big delusion? That was, this was a counter-concept that the societal level was supposed to replace what the state couldn't create anymore. That's my suspicion. And maybe when we talk about social cohesion, I'm also having this slight suspicion that maybe in a hidden way we talk about the nation, about national cohesion, and about you know, societies creating cohesion, which why actually the governments or the state's administrations cannot create anymore. So that's, um, that's, so to say, what I'm afraid about. Now, social cohesion, if there is cohesion, what is it? Okay, it sticks. Isn't that a rather um, stable concept? Um, in, uh, one which is, well, if I would be polemical, maybe even stagnant. I mean, cohesion is something stable, no? Um, and maybe that's my last proposal, but I, I don't want to, you know, to talk too much. Maybe what we need to keep communities together it might seem absurd, but it's more social mobility. That me, people can arrive and then achieve something which they want to achieve in their lives. Be them refugees or be them, you know, uh, so-called Randgruppen, you know, uh, socially... Uh, what is it, Bildungsferne Schichten, that's my favorite term in these <laughs> days. Um, you know, the ones who have not enough education, that's why they're called Bildungsferne. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and, uh, you know, so various social groups, um, how can they, in their perception, move up? Or their children? Because I think that's the main desire, isn't it? Now, that might destroy social cohesion because if there's social mobility, somebody might also move out of his original environment and his original community. But would that be bad? No. So I think that's the key problem of our societies. There's a lack of social mobility, which of course also can mean that you move down. 
and that's what so many people are afraid of. They are all afraid of moving down, and then they vote for those parties who promise them security that they won't move down. But actually, you know, where is the possibility to move up, to have social mobility? But uh, uh, Philip, that's, that's Philip, Philip I, 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 I'm very glad about your uh, um, uh, your. Um, destruction of the of the concept of social co cohesion but i want to uh, to to add a question to that um, the question would be uh, i'm speaking as a from the point of view of practice <laughs> uh, and from the point of view of practice i i would say if some people or some activists or some people who engage for in their in their quarters uh, engage Uh, to uh, to give little, to ha to help little children in school, especially them who come from underprivileged background, uh, so that they all have the same chances. We would usually say uh, they improve the social cohesion of our society, and we wouldn't be too wrong. Uh, on the other hand, you are. You are right. If we do that, if we succeed with that, uh, we give these children chances that put them out of the traditional uh, frameworks. Uh, so, is it against p p uh, social cohesion or in favor of it? I would say it's in favor of social cohesion, isn't it? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm not saying that social cohesion by itself is wrong. And of course, all these social initiatives and social workers to do something for it, and, and individual citizens, of course, are indispensable and very important. By the way, I try my best also to help other school children who might not have the same possibilities I can offer to my children. Um, but then there's the question, you know, how, how much one can do it and how organized, that's then the difficult question. But I would say, sure, in that way, if we talk about social cohesion as a prerequisite for social mobility, I would agree, yes. And for that purpose, it's needed to get together and mm -hmm. to, to get over bridges. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, you know, one can put a practical test. Ask the typical Green or SPÖ voter in If this country, social democratic voter, and ask him how many, let's say, in a city like Vienna or maybe Turkey, um, maybe, maybe uh, Berlin or, I don't know, uh, Paris, ask him, ask him or her How many Turkish or in Paris Arab friends do you have? Ask the question and wait for the answer. Okay. And uh, I'm not so sure about you know yeah. what answer you will get. So yeah. and there's the practical level. Yes, then indeed it means that you know uh, you need to open up and then and then get into contact with those people mm -hmm. on a very practical level uh, as an as an individual citizen if you want to to strengthen social cohesion. Uh, I, I now want to open the floor for every uh, every counter argument, but I, uh, to stimulate it in a way. Um, you don't have to answer to that, but I, that's a, uh, that's the possibility you have. I, I would say now there are two, maybe two questions also here on the floor. The one, uh, or I will put them forward. Uh, the one is, uh, if we talk about social cohesion, we talk about practices, people who do some things on a local or some other level, like you do, that improve social cohesion. Uh, the other idea we can also have is that it's not only a question of uh, practices, but also a question of uh, stories we tell, stories that we tell about ourselves. So we can, uh, do we have stories that say, okay, this is a group and that is a group and they are a day and they are a day, so that at the in the worst case, there is a us against them, uh, or do we have a story uh, that uh, includes everybody in a society or a nation or a region or in a city uh, that uh, addresses them with a we? Uh, so the question is, what is more important for social cohesion? Does a practice help if we have at the same time a political and, uh, and uh, d discursive uh, um, framework where uh, societies are, uh, uh, are zerrissen in a us and them and in groups and they are not uh, and uh, and not uh, put together in a in a common story. Maybe you want to say something about that or about something other. 
Ja, uh, ich würde da gerne anknüpfen, weil Sie auch... Well, I would like to add something to that, because you have been talking about practice so far, and at the beginning you have focused on the micro level, in which I'm also working as a practical worker at Migrare organization. Very briefly, I would like to share with you some thoughts, which I have heard when listening to you, some concepts, some words have come to my mind when talking about social cohesion, the lack of conflicts. Previously, we have mentioned similarities. Now, what has added are new elements. Now, I'd simply like to take use of the opportunity to tell you practically what we are doing, because this is also our objective to strengthen our social cohesion. We have a project called Nachbarinnen, which means neighbors, which originally comes from Berlin. Now, we also have this project project in Vienna, and we at, up, in Upper Austria at Migrara, we have uh, also taken up this project, we have further developed this. Nachbarinnen, so neighbors, means that female migrants who are officially unemployed and who are looking for a job get a qualification measure for seven months, which means that they attend a course for seven months for social work, and within, the, within these seven months they qualify to do this kind of work. And this project is so multifaceted because, uh, on the one hand, it uh, fosters cohesion in the group of 16 participants each and uh, also addresses this topic, and these are participants from different countries with different languages with different language backgrounds, I should say. And this project is uh, split up in two parts. One is qualification, and participants also get a degree, a kind of graduation in cooperation with the College of Social Work Linz. They get 28 or 26 ECTS points, so these are credit points recognized across Europe. So they get them every day per week in this curriculum. And this offers them an opportunity to undergo some further training. The other aspect of this project consists in the other part of graduates uh, being qualified uh, and employed at the Migrari organization and working in families. And they share their theoretical knowledge they have acquired during the training. And thereby they build bridges. So they could be considered as bridge builders, given that these bridges also serve the purpose of social cohesion, although I'm still sticking to this concept because it's uh, defined so differently also in expert literature, it's used different ways, and for me social cohesion means this, or on this micro level, something uh, to do something together, and this is also the most important important part, the most essential part when it comes to social cohesion. I don't think, I think it's not about uh, not having conflicts at all and everything being harm, uh, in harmony, etc., because cohesion, living together, needs conflicts. Consequently, I view this project, Nachbarin, so neighbors, as an important building block. What's very essential from this perspective, uh, since I'm coordinating this curriculum. I'm also a trainer in this course. And what I have learned is that if you break this down to the micro level, we suddenly learn, so it's a total of 17 women who established that they are not that different. They are all facing the same problems and the same challenges. So there's many, many commonalities. And uh, what's essential here is the question how they can succeed in uh, getting this cohesion. First, at the beginning, I was talking about uh, intrinsic motivation. The main purpose is not to enforce something from uh, on a top-down basis, but rather on the vice versa. And the people have the feeling that they can actively participate. And this is what is behind the concept of Nachbarin and so neighbors, so to provide help for self-help. So um, empowerment 
important is a very important wor um, word for me. And what's also very important is a kind of feeling or something that is also being conveyed via the media when spreading the word and something on which migrants uh, can confirm that uh, to be a migrant means not being able to do something and this is something that excludes something, something beforehand and which raises negative feelings and from my perspective it's very important and it has already been mentioned several times today to see the chances and the opportunities Consequently, the first part uh, of uh, our curriculum is called workshop, and in this workshop we create a joint basis to show participants where the common denominators are, where can we proceed to continue together and to bring this then to the next level. And this also means uh, to see where commonalities are, common features are, and this also means engaging in dialogue, and uh, this is the most important thing for me when it is about social cohesion, no matter what people this is about, no matter whether they have been living in Austria for a long time already or not, well, it's a good keyword. This is where we are heading when we are talking to each other, and I just get a sign that uh, we have only five minutes left. One minute, 90 seconds. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, it's really little, one minute. Um, <laughs> now that we are starting to warm up um, our minds and our souls, uh, well, narrative and practice for me are as uh, important both. And for practice, I mean uh, doing things on the ground and experimenting. I agree that we cannot leave everything to civil society. I'm against enjoyization of our communities. Uh, it's, it's a way also to get rid of responsibilities by the institution. This is why I was trying to focus that cities, which are institutions, are local institutions, can help bridge in between uh, uh, locally uh, uh, launched uh, citizens-based initiatives and uh, institu the institutional setting. Uh, well, on the issue of the rural areas and uh, regions, uh, I, I, I'm, I think it's, uh, you are right. I, I, I remember the story of what happened in Greece in 2011, the uh, potatoes movement mm -hmm. that was in, in Thessaloniki that threw out an initiative of students and, and, and academicians at the university in Thessaloniki that were able to bring potatoes in the town where people have less purchase power and circumvent uh, the system, the uh, retailing and distribution for the big supermarkets. And so the people from these uh, rural areas could come with the potatoes. They were selling potatoes for cheaper uh, to the people. Uh, and people didn't have to go to the big uh, supermarkets to, uh, to buy them. And that was a way that the, camp, the county size was saving the city somehow. Okay. And, um, no, but <laughs> well, I have to say another thing about the One narrative. Thing. Yeah. Uh, narrative is absolutely important. What we are trying to do as activists from both shores, we have launched this Sabir Maidan process. We have uh, developed an idea of Mediterranean citizenship. We have launched a manifesto, a political manifesto inspired by the Ventotene manifesto, the manifesto that was talking for the first time about a united Europe in the, in the 40s. Uh, um, by Spinelli, Rossi, Ursula, Hirschman, and so on. So we have launched a manifesto for a free and united Mediterranean, and we believe that we have to invent a new narrative where citizenship is reshaped on the basis of something that does not exist yet, but it could become in the future. We have somehow to us to show to our institution what we would like to live in. Because people coming here, I mean, they are, str struggled. They are struggling between a, a, a national citizenship or identity they, they had before and the new one that they cannot reach. Why can't we have a, a kind of uh, uh, commons-based citizenship which is regional and which is somehow structured on different opportunities, on different projects and, and on different local practices? And I think it's important also to, to somehow to challenge uh, uh, that and to say uh, let's redesign, rethink citizenship and uh, let's think that we can create maybe a Euro-Mediterranean united and free space.
Now I have to uh, I have to stick to the short answer. <laughs> it yeah, depends. Okay. Uh, well, uh, for such a broad topic, one minute. I think the only thing that I can say is try to find our studies, read them. <laughs> you will find most of the answers there. But I think uh, I can conclude with something happy, namely that. Uh, Consistently in our studies, we show that cohesion is happiness. So, uh, people who live in more cohesive neighborhoods, regions, Bundesländer, or countries are happier than those who live in less cohesive places. Um, yeah, and then maybe if I could quickly, uh, very briefly comment on uh, this very relevant point that you brought up whether uh, cohesion is a concept which is useful, which would bring us forward, or is it something that would just legitimate the status quo um, and just say, yeah, everything is fine, keeping the existing hierarchies and disbalances, uh, inequalities uh, that are in society. This is a very strong criticism that our research team had to face uh, from Asian scholars. That's what they told us. No, uh, we don't need this cohesion. This is... Uh, yeah, not a relevant concept, but uh, to the contrary, it is uh, exactly because of what we find. Because uh, if, we, if we want to lead meaningful, fulfilling lives, in very plain words, happiness, then we need cohesive societies. So if people talk like there, they are happier than uh, the others. So, uh, Philip, your last you have the last word I, I hope the audience is happy with us <laughs> <laughs> because there was a lack of cohesion there was no question and answer okay uh, extremely briefly um, yeah I, I see your point you know there's a, also a long communitaristic tradition in research at the foundation um, I, I, I see a point I agree I mean I'm a historian you know so what can I say about present times um, or let alone the future. Usually I'm quite humble about that. But what I wrote in, in, in the refugee book, in the chapter on integration, was exactly what you proposed here in your practical work as a social worker. Indeed, you know, fostering uh, the competence and resources of women in the sense of a Frauenförderungsprogramm, that is the way to, well, foster integration also of refugees and to uh, allow upward social mobility. So I'm, I'm very happy that I learned about this initiative. And uh, the other one still is more like, the second conclusion is still more like a, a question mark, which is, you know, how and what, be it an urban government or a national one, um, can a social state, a social state, a welfare state, be equipped in a way that it really addresses the people who need it and to f facilitate uh, social mobility? I'm not so sure how far we, uh, we, we, we are getting there, but yes, one needs to try the best to discuss that. Yes, especially in these times of, uh, well, neoliberal politics, the retrenchment of the welfare state. Yes, this is actually the crucial issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I thank you very much. We came to a conclusion. The conclusion is cohesion is happiness. So, uh, we, if we better societies, we better it not only for the others, we better it for ourselves because then we are also happier than we are now and some of us need that more than others. Uh, I'm not very happy today, so I'm glad to hear that. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you very much to discuss with me here on the floor. We Leave now and hand over back the floor to our friends from the facilitator uh, team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert.